Binance announces fiat to crypto pairings that could shift reliance away from Bitcoin. Dow Jones Media Group and Brave Blockchain team up to test consent-based ads. PayPal eliminates anonymous accounts and announces a fee change for international transfers. IBM reports its first pilot transactions with international banks. Huobi, the world's fourth largest exchange, relocates to London as entry point to Europe. NASA tests its blockchain technology in space. And German ICO SaveDroid appears to exit scam for $50 million before announcing that it was just a prank? And the markets are truly bullish today. We've got all your headlines mixed with some daily market analysis. I'm Elio Trades and your FUD TV daily update starts now. Welcome back, FUD Nation. Diving in here on the total market caps, we can see that Bitcoin's up a little over 2%. We have a nice bullish day today. Ethereum clocking some serious gains up above 550. That's a huge recovery from Ethereum. And we're looking for this to start making headway back towards its highs of over $1,000, of course. I'm not sure how soon that will be, but Ethereum really definitely held its strength over $1,000 for a while after the sort of market dip was well in effect. Bitcoin Cash really leading the herd here with a 13% gain. And Litecoin, every, everything in the top 10, most of the things in the top 100 besides Bitum and a few other coins, it's maybe three coins here in the top 100 that are clocking reds here. Uh, as we go to the biggest gainers and losers in the top 100, we can see that Monaco is really, this pump here is coming from a listing on BitHum. It's absolutely crazy the volume that's pumped out of Monaco after it's listing on BitHum. As you can see, it's it's crazy. It's got 300 and over $350 million in volume here, $373 million. Pundi X still doing really great off of that. Like we said, we didn't cover this yesterday. We meant to say this. It got edited out actually, but they are doing a buyback, which is causing a huge spike as well as they're doing a lot of rollouts. Very interesting stuff coming from Pundi X. Of course, Bitcoin Diamond with a 46% pump. This is a huge pump up from Bitcoin Diamond. Mithril again with another good day. Let's see. Oh, wow. It's above a dollar. Wow. What a coin, Mithril. I still can't get over this. This is like the roller coaster to end all roller coasters. We'll see where this thing ends up. Obviously, I'm quite skeptical of new social media, but look at this coin. They really, it started down here at just eight cents, not even two, three weeks ago. Yeah, I guess it's like three three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, but it's uh, it's really just, it went over above a dollar, then down, and now it's back over a dollar. Wow. It's just crazy. So there's a lot going on with Mithril, very cool coin. And Stellar, yeah, Stellar was literally 15 cents a couple days ago. Craziness pumping out of Stellar. Love to see that. And of course, IBM just, which we'll cover in a few minutes, IBM just piloted their first international transactions between banks. Obviously, VeChain with another good day. Everything's having a good day. It's a good day in crypto. Hopefully, this April 17th tax day sort of rush is really what's causing this, like a lot of experts have predicted. And hopefully, this is really the end of the bear trend, the beginning of momentum building for these altcoins. Obviously, we're going to cover in a minute how Binance has switched and introduced fiat pairings and that is critical for understanding how Bitcoin will not have such an effect on the market. So let's let's go ahead and hop into that now. We're going to go check out the Binance news right now. In our lead news out of the day, we have word that Binance is announcing their fiat to crypto pairings. This is huge because right now we all know that Bitcoin's ebbs and flows are really having too much of a toll on the market. These alts are getting ransacked when Bitcoin has a bad day and doesn't quite make sense. Why would NEO go down because Bitcoin goes down? It just doesn't make sense. Like Neo's value and Bitcoin's value are just not correlated. You know, for example, introducing fiat's crypto pairings would allow for obviously each crypto to sort of hold its own and sort of have its own chart. That's what we really want here because right now seeing Bitcoin take a hit because there's all these miners and all these whales and all these uh, exchanges and there's all these, there's so much going on with Bitcoin and the futures and, and all the different sort of forces on the coin that having all these other alts affected by Bitcoin's price is not good for the market. There's been an intense discussion over the last few weeks to months about decoupling the market from Bitcoin because it really has proven that it's too dramatic and too, too negative the effects of having everything tied to Bitcoin. This is all because of Malta, of course. Malta is the reason why any of this is possible because they have extremely forward-looking policies on financial tech. CZ, the CEO of Binance, has really gone and formed a relationship here with the Malta government, and that's what's allowed for this sort of blossoming, if you will, of this relationship where USD and fiat pairings, probably euro pairings as well, will be able to be implemented. That is huge news. It will allow for a decoupling of Bitcoin from the market, and we can have faith now that countries like Malta are gonna step up and fill gaps if sort of leading nations, if you will, like the United States and China and European nations are, ref are refusing to do so or are unable to do so. Sweet. We love you, Malta. And the Dow Jones Media Group is going to team up with Brave Browser and the Brave blockchain to test consent-based ads. Brave, which raised literally $35 million in 30 seconds, that's literally more than a million dollars a second. But that's for good reason, as it was created by Brendan Eich, the creator of JavaScript and co-founder of Mozilla. And obviously the coin that is associated with Brave is the BAT, the basic attention token. Brave's whole mission here is to cut out the middleman when it comes to the ad industry. They're trying to connect the ad creators and the payers directly to the customers. 
One of the main ways that they're going to be doing this is through something called consent-based ads. They're going to essentially give the consumers the option to opt in to seeing the ad. The senior vice president, Daniel Bernard of Barron's, which is the company that owns the Dow Jones Media Group, said that it's an exciting and innovative step for the Dow Jones Media Group. This is very exciting as it's just showing more integration between sort of cryptocurrency projects and mainstream sort of adoption projects and also mainstream finance world. We definitely want some crossover here between the mainstream sort of stock world and the investment world and the cryptocurrency world. We need to attract attract real legitimate investors to the space to really inflate our market caps, to really get us the capital in this industry that we need to propel this revolution forward. We need more money. We need more investors. We need more attention. And Brave is really pushing the limit here on creating good partnerships with great media groups. Interestingly, IBM announced a very similar project yesterday in partnership with Salon Media. Very interesting space. And we can see the advertisement space is definitely going to be the target of a lot of changes as we move into the sort of web 4.0 revolution. And speaking of IBM, we have word that they've just done some of their first pilot transfers with massive international banks. IBM's partnership with these international banks is called Batavia. The whole partnership began with the Bank of Montreal, Caixa Bank, which is a big Spanish bank, Commerce Bank, Erst Group, and the United Bank of Switzerland, UBS. They all started working on this last fall, and apparently they're completing their first pilot transfers this week. Right now, there's no mention of Stellar Lumen being involved in any of these transfers, but we definitely know that IBM's intention is to use Stellar Lumen for all settling of financial sort of transactions and transfers of assets. So we'll see how this starts to play in. But we know that some of the biggest banks, international banks in the world are hopping on, much in the way that we see Ripple doing international payments sort of solutions. We're seeing Stellar attack the very same market. Very interesting stuff, and we're definitely very bullish. It makes us even more bullish on IBM, Stellar, and this whole blockchain revolution. So PayPal has recently adjusted their fee structure that actually adds more fees if you're sending money internationally. It also got rid of all anonymous accounts and makes it so essentially you have KYC rules enforced on PayPal. So everyone gets essentially one account and one account only. That is going to have a big effect on cryptocurrency as PayPal has been a really effective way to transfer sort of e-cash around the world. And, you know, depending on where you are, maybe there's not that much of restriction on essentially identifying yourself and being clear about how many PayPal accounts you may have. So if you're someone who might be using PayPal to sort of move money around or not necessarily have money tied to yourself, like a lot of people may or may not do in crypto, well, it might drive you further into this blockchain world. Honestly, if I had to guess what this was about, it could be about new tariffs imposed in the United States. It's not quite clear, but all we know is that PayPal is adjusting their fees and they're getting rid of one of the features that have definitely come to define the platform, which is semi-anonymous accounts. So we'll see how this plays out, but it's definitely looking like a bullish sign for cryptocurrency and bringing more people into the crypto game. So if you don't know what's going on with the SaveDroid ICO, apparently the CEO right there put out this tweet yesterday as soon as the ICO had concluded that thanks guys over and out hashtag save droid ICO and it's him on a beach drinking beer somewhere where they had just raised $50 million and essentially giving the impression that they had exit scammed as they shut down their website, shut down their telegram and the whole message here was peace. Obviously, this was big news. As it, Look, here's where we're on. This morning, there was an article put out saying in an apparent exit scam, CEO of German startup is over and out after filling $50 million ICO. And so right now in Cointelegraph, they're still running an article about how this was an exit scam. But they actually put out this video today and it's not gone. And it's how the CEO is just saying, look, guys, there's a problem here. The fact that we could even as a regulated company have potentially even done this even if we had wanted to, is the issue. This is a huge issue, is that, look, we're a regulated company and we could have still somehow stepped out with $50 million of investor cash. There's a wrong here. There's, a, there's something that needs to be fixed here. This was essentially the message of the ICO, the fake ICO exit scam. Is it a good message? <laughs> The reality is that there's a lot of fraud and a lot of scamming going on in the ICO space. And so this is a valid message, whether it's been delivered in the right way or not, ew, that's yet to be seen. Regardless, the Save Droid ICO is not a scam. It seems like they're gonna be around for a while and this was all just a message, a stunt, a joke. And Huobi announces that they will be moving to London as an entry point to Europe. Huobi was originally born in Beijing, but has since moved around quite a bit since the sort of regulations have come into effect in China. They're looking at not Malta, not Switzerland, absolutely London, more precisely Britain. That's actually not more precise, but it's the entry point for European market for us. Soon we'll have an office there. Very cool for Huobi, and it's also good for just having more competition in the exchange game. The exchanges are the most vulnerable, most centralized, 
uh, just a most flawed part of our sort of cryptocurrency economy. So more competition, more access, these are good things for crypto and more regulation, of course. This comes on the heels of an announcement that Huobi actually opened an office in South Korea on March 30th. They also plan to open an office in San Francisco. And NASA enlists the help of the Ethereum blockchain to develop a technology for deep space exploration. We have detected intelligent life, Lord Vitalik. <sighs> Google. That's right, NASA has awarded a new grant for the development of an autonomous spacecraft that could be run on blockchain technology without human intervention. In this project, the Ethereum blockchain technology will be exploited to develop a new decentralized, secure, and cognitive networking and computing infrastructure for deep space exploration. I hope to develop technology that can recognize environmental threats and avoid them, as well as complete a number of tasks automatically. I'm honored that NASA recognized my work, and I'm excited to continue challenging technology's ability to think and do on its own. And this statement came from Jin Y. Coxis, an assistant professor of electronical and computer engineering at the University of Akron, Ohio, who received a $330,000 NASA grant to support her research. Again, just another exciting and awesome story about use of blockchain technology in spheres that probably none of us could have imagined. And that's going to continue to be the case over and over again. That's right, guys, the real FUD nation. We're here at the end of the video. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about this broadcast. We always love reading each and every one of your comments. And if you're new, you got to subscribe. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. I'm Elio Trade. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll see you on the next episode of FUD TV.